Scott wants to break a record. And no surprise here. You know how much he likes Guinness. That's right, Steve. But not the beer. The World Book of Records. Uh, uh, based on how you're dressed, I'm afraid to ask what you're going to do. Well, myself and, 100 and other, 102 other friends are going to ride a roller coaster naked. Cool. Well, I'll ride the roller coaster this way. That's good for you. Uh, maybe you can write our GPM too, our genuine positivity message. All right. I would be happy to discuss the ups and downs. Oh, yeah. I get it. Ups and downs of the roller coaster ride. What, or if you're naked, the up, never mind. And yeah, no, um, no. Since we are great at predicting the future, we had Will Wheaton on playing D&D on The Big Bang Theory. Then the show came out, and they played D&D on the big Dungeons & Dragons on The Big Bang Theory. Let's interview someone else who was on that show. Great! Let's have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on. Oh, yeah, him. Okay. All characters, events, and interviews in this show, even those based on real people, are entirely fictional. All celebrity voices and answers are impersonated by untrained individuals. This is just for fun and is how we would like the conversation to go. Welcome to What Happened in the World Today. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And this is a tale of how bad life decisions led to a YouTube show. And we're going to talk about what we've noticed is going on in the world today. And what I've noticed is I am wearing my very cool, which, oh, man. Oh, wow. Did you see that blur? It did. Blurred out big time. To, to hey, this looks it awful familiar. It was awful. Why can't I? I can't. Gotta no, I won't do it. Here, let's do this. There. That, that's the right side. This side you want to show. Right, did I get it? Oh, what happened to the world today? Watch on YouTube. Wow, I can't. Why can't I get uh, That was your Christmas it? present from last year. Oh, there we go. I finally, I finally got it to where it oh, goes. Okay, that was that was terrible. So what I've noticed is that's what I'm wearing. But what I've noticed is what you're wearing. You're you're wearing what appears to be a bathrobe, and there appears to be a roller coaster behind you. So what is going on in your world today? I am considering going to the Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, wait, wait, wait. The what? The Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's a the it's, Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Yes, Bob Blackpool, England. Oh, okay. And and it's kind of like Six Flags, but it's a pleasure beach. It's a theme park, and it's called oh, the it's Blackpool a, Pleasure Beach. And what is the theme? What of the rides at the Pleasure Beach? Okay, well, it's a normal place. However, because it's in Europe and they don't have quite the stigma of nudism that we have here. Um, the nudists are planning on having a record attempt at roller coaster riding in the nude. Um, the current what is that one time? Just get on there naked, you win. That's all you got to do. Well, the thing is, the winner, the last, the, the previous, the current record holder is 102 people. They need to do 103 in order to break the the attempt. Well, how many people can you fit on a roller coaster at a time? Would they got to keep going? They just they just keep adding um, cars to the train. Wait, they do it all at once? They do 103 people at once? Uh, That's got to be a record. No, that can't be right. Well, let's see. Let me double check a few things here. See, they didn't get quite that much into it, but um, they, they, they tell participants to bring a bathrobe, which is what I'm prepared for, flip-flops because. or tennis shoes, and a towel to sit on and a bag to store their clothes. So apparently yeah. you can't walk the whole park the whole time in the nude, although after the attempt – there's going to be a skinny dipping event at the Sandcastle Water Park, which will allow you to ride the rides, the water slides, and the buff for up to three hours. So why didn't we see this amusement park in any of the Fifty Shades movies? See, now that's a really good question. Is the pleasure well, park. Because nudism is not the same as naughty sex. Families are nudists. Entire families do things in the nude. Okay. Whereas Fifty Shades was strictly about sex. Uh, okay. So Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Blah, blah. That's a tongue twister. It is. A Blackpool Pleasure Beach is an amusement park situated along the Fidel Coast in Blackpool, Lancaster, Northwest England. The park was founded in, 19, in 1896, has been owned and operated by the Thompson family ever since its inception. You want another interesting tidbit? 
you like tongue twisters. The name of the nudism group is the British Nat Naturism. Okay. Did you also know that they have the largest number of roller coasters in any park in the UK? So this is the Cedar Point of the UK. Yes. And here's the names of some of the wooden roller coasters. The Big Dipper, the Blue Flyer, the Grand National, and the Nickelodeon Streak. <laughs> oh, yes, they call him the Streak. But the funny way is it's the Grand National roller coaster that they're going to do the attempt on. Okay. And it's notoriously bumpy. So if you're in the nude without support on a bumpy roller coaster, you're pretty prepared to be a little sore when you're done. That's funny. It is. So, so yeah, so they're known for the roller coasters. Yes. But why? Uh, just Okay. Just weird. It's just weird. Well, this isn't going to be on March 2nd, so I figure – you're still going to be in that limbo land, so I'm going to take a quick flight over there, do the attempt, and come back. Okay. Well, yeah. It's, uh, crazy. Best brand for leisure and tourism. Pleasure Beach training team. Best practice in tourism training. Fifth best amusement park in the world. Best seaside park. Best radio commercial. Pleasure Beach website distinguished. They got all kinds of awards. Valhalla, best water ride in the world. Valhalla, best water ride in the road, two years in a row. Second best seaside park in the world. Sixth best amusement park in the world. Yep, my friends from Best UK water UK. ride in the world. Third best hotel in the United Kingdom. Best theme park in the United Kingdom. Wow. This Valhalla wins a lot, though. It does. So that water ride makes it a lot. Plus, they have shows there and all kinds of crazy stuff. Huh. Well, what do you know? It, it's it's kind of like a cross between Vegas and Six Flags at the same time. Uh, probably, I don't know. Probably Without like gambling. Point. Probably no gambling, though. Probably more like Cedar Point. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let, why don't you take that robe off and show us what it's going to look like for you on a roller coaster. Ooh, ooh, go down, go up. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What are you looking down there for, dude? Well, I had to untie it. See? Right, now, really? now it's like you're riding a roller coaster. I'm ready. Now ride the roller coaster. Going up the wait, hill. Wait, wait, wait. Going up the hill. Going up the oh, hill. Shoot. I got to take this up. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. There we go. All right. Go up the hill. All right. Now you're going down the hill. Oh, no, up is okay. Now you're going down the hill. Ah! Okay. Now you're going to the right. Now you're going around turn to the right. Come on. You're going around turn to the right. Really? Now to the left. Now you're doing a corkscrew. Now you're upside down. No. Okay, now you're done. Uh, oh, no. I think I lost my center of my chair. You're oh, I no guess I'm okay. You are no fun at all. You're fine. You're in a good spot. All right. I, I guess right. now that I got the robe off, I'm going to have to sit here in the nude for the rest of the show. Sorry, people. Well, you're, in, you're not nude. You just took your robe off. So that's oh. funny. All right. It only takes 103 people to break the record. That's not a record. That's not a lot. No, it's not. Okay. Well, so guess now, what time it is. So now let's go on to our genuine positivity message. And our genuine positivity message is written by Fun Guy the Entertainer, Scott Yay! Thomas. Scott, tell us about your genuine positivity message. Life can be a roller coaster. Bumpy, full of ups and downs, wild curves, and unexpected twists. But just like a roller coaster, the fantastic feeling of surviving the challenges leaves you feeling exhilarated and energizing, knowing that you beat the fear and uncertainty, and yes, you can do it again. Yay, Fun Guy the Entertainer. Thank you very much, Fun Guy. It was more positive, positive than the last one I did. That is a good one. So, yeah, you should put the suspenders on so you look like Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, well, no, because then you also have a flannel shirt. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Should I put the robe back on? Yeah, please. All right. Yeah, it's kind of distracting. It's just because the white this. balance is all thrown off. <laughs> yes. This is winter around here. I don't have a tan anymore. Uh, yeah, anymore. Well, you see me at the end of the summer. I got a hell of a tan because I do a lot of stuff I outside. I don't tan. I burn and then I... Yeah, you, you get this really interesting shade of magenta. I just, I just burn. 
That was when you're Polish. Polish and Slovenian. Jak szmasz? So now it's time for our interview. And I thought our interview uh, was fitting because we just had Will Wheaton on. Yes. And then we tune into Big Bang Theory. And guess who's guest starring on the Big Bang Theory? Well, here, here's the part that I got the biggest kick Will out. Wheaton. We did a whole show with Will Wheaton talking about how they should have a, you know, they play Dungeons and Dragons on the Big Bang Theory constantly, but you never see Will playing. And right. they, they, they should do that. Look what he did for us. He did it. And I know. Did. It's, it's like, it's almost like we, well, we didn't know it. It's not like we planned it, right? It's not like we were looking ahead going, oh, what episode's coming up? Where's World War One where he plays Dungeons and Dragons? We didn't know that. We had no clue. No, no one happened. So why didn't we pick lottery numbers on that show? That's what I'm no saying. No kidding. But the cool thing is, here they got William Shatner and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and the guy who's in Magic Mike, I keep forgetting his name. It just irritates me that I can't remember names. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, it was a great show. But, anyway, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used to be a Milwaukee Bucks player. So I yes, thought it would be cool if we can get him to talk about his career and being on the show. And apparently you were able to get him to come over to your studio. Yep. And the guy you were thinking of is Joe Maganella. Joe Maganella, yes. Joe Maganella. Oh, man. I had, I I had a lot of fun with that show. <laughs> <laughs> is that tight? Oh. Uh -oh. And, Joe, and Joe Maganello is, uh, is married to uh, Sophia Vergara. Very attractive woman. Oh, uh, yeah. You're like, you're like, I don't know who's Sophia Vergara. All right. So let me go get Kareem. All right, thank you. All right. Don't take too long. Because otherwise, I've got to ramble forever. And although I am capable of rambling, rambling forever, for those of you who watch my cooking show, you know that there are times where I have to ramble between stuff. Because watching me stir for four minutes is boring. Okay. Okay. How are you? Um, yeah, I, that's, that's how he is at the scene, in the picture scene at the last of the... Big Bang Theory, so you look just like normal. Your head gets cut up and everything. Hey, Scott, it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are yourself? Good. Let me let me duck down here so you can uh, Oh, that is much me. better. Yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> this is actually a pretty good one. <laughs> seven, seven foot one. I'm impressed. This is actually oh, a pretty seven good two. one. Seven, no, you're seven. seven one now. You were seven two when you were when you were playing, but apparently yeah, all sure. that was around, you shrunk an inch. All that age. This looks pretty good, though. It does. It does. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Ah. Okay, it's the clutch cargo style mask. Yes. There, there you go, Jeannie. We thought it'd work out better this way because he's got the little, little beardy thing here. And yeah. little beardy. What do they call that? Uh, soul patch. Sure. Yeah, it's a soul patch. So can you believe? Can you can you believe? Can you believe? Can you believe that uh, I played uh, 20 years in the NBA? 20 years. 20 years, Scott. Now, 20 years. under normal circumstances, I would never believe it. But I know it's a fact, so I have to believe it. Yeah, 20 years. And I brought Milwaukee right by you, their first championship. Exactly. And, and Me personally, and, I brought it. And, and the most impressive thing is um, you were only like 24 years old at the time. Yep, and I did that with my famous Skyhook shot. I trademarked yeah. it. Skyhook. It's pretty cool. And they even named uh, some kind of uh, investigation after that for you. What? The Skyhook investigation. Oh, that was on a TV show. Never mind. Oh, man. You are crazy, dude. You are crazy. I am. But, yeah, what? you know, so uh, I know you guys were talking. That's how uh, Steve got me on the show. You guys were talking to Will Wheaton. And uh, you guys didn't know that I was going to be on a show. Big surprise, huh? Myself, it was a uh, huge surprise. Joe I never knew Mag you played Magdalena. D &D. Go ahead. I never knew you played D and D. That was just so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I played D and D. Got my I got my own twenty-seven sided dice. I, I do like how you handle uh, orcs. I believe it was what you were going to do that orc. You, you, what was I going to do that orc? Um, you. You're going to use your skyhook and smite him. Okay. So, but you enjoyed the show? Yes, tremendously. I, I also saw you last 
season in Fresh Off the Boat. Oh. Apparently, you, that, you yeah. owned so, a used car dealership and you sold, sold a motorhome. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little bit in acting, kind of, kind of enjoying it, kind of have fun. People kind of remember who I am, so kind of enjoying going out and doing those kinds of things. You want to see me in more stuff? I certainly do. Do you got something coming up? No. Hmm. Well, you're that's on our not, show, so that's new. I want to know if you want to see me in more stuff. Of course I do. Personally, one of the things I get a kick out of is, is I, I obviously have never met you in person, so this is the first time actually conversing here. Talking to me, yes. But um, everything I've read about you, because uh, a lot of people aren't who they seem. When they're in a show, if they, they, they have the face for the public, but in real life, sometimes they're not such nice people. But everything I've heard from all the different people is you are just a really good person to act, to, to be friends with, period. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, uh, I try to be nice to all my friends and everything. Uh, you can go to my website, kareemabdouljabbar.com. And you can actually buy stuff. Uh, I'm having a uh, uh, auction sale right now where you can get autographed uniforms and stuff like that. So, uh, although you got to hurry up though, because oh, I think this sale ends uh, Mar March second. This is Saturday, so this is March second. So, the auction ends today. So get out there and uh, and get on that. Now, I did know that I got the uh, Presidential Medal of Freedom from Obama. Yes, that was also really cool. Yep. But do you know what, what really – I was not a huge basketball fan back when you were actually playing. And actually, back then I had just moved up to Wisconsin. But okay. one of the things that I got a really big kick out of is watching you as a uh, co-pilot uh, in the movie Airplane. Oh, yeah. What's the clearance clearance? Yes. Was the, thing, the thing that I got the biggest kick out of this in the whole thing was the fact that here you are, seven foot two, in a cockpit. We in a little, little cockpit. In a real airplane that would not have worked. <laughs> sure would have. No. It would look like it looked a net. What was that? It would look like it would have looked a net. Really jammed up like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, do, do you remember your, your first film that you were in? My first film? Yes, 1972 with Bruce Lee. Well. The Game of Death. I don't remember that one. I remember being on TV because I was in Mannix in an emergency. Yeah. You know, oh, and then the Mad for Mannix TV yeah. and then laughing. But I don't remember being in a Bruce Lee movie. Yes, that was your debut film. And really? um, yes. I'm going to have to I, edit my IMDb then because that's not on my IMDb. Did you know really? That? See, now, yeah. I, I really remember that scene because by the time Bruce Lee gets up to you, you know, the first thing he does to look, because he's not very tall, so the first thing he does to he looks at you, he goes, oh, my. <laughs> huh. That was so awesome. That's crazy. So there's the clip in a trailer from I Am Bruce Lee, but related videos, but it does not have me listed that on my IMDb. Really? Yeah. See, I know things about you. See, I always get razzed by Steve because whenever we interview people, I don't know diddly squat. But I actually knew things about you. Yeah, because I've got Airplane in 1980 as my first one, but it does not have – it has the related videos. See all the videos, but it does not have me listed in the Bruce Lee. I am Bruce Lee. Well, that's because the movie was the game of death. But it's not still not listed here. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Did a lot of TV, you know, a lot of TV back in the uh, you know, 70s and 80s. Yeah, that's mostly what I did. So, uh, so besides so playing ball, of course. Yeah, made it easier. So crazy, crazy, crazy. And, of course, last year you competed on season 26 of Dancing with the Stars. woo -hoo! I did. I did. I'm a very good dancer. Unfortunately, they got me a very short girl. <laughs> I, I don't know why they didn't give me a taller girl. Well, uh, I think it's kind of interesting that she was able to dance with her face in your belly button. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Just think about it this way. We were, you missed our last show, but we talked about the Razzies. See, if you had gone shirtless, she could have gone <laughs> raspberry on your belly button. That would be bad. Well, it, it would make for some good 
good, uh, uh, what do they call those? Um, embarrassing videos, yes. But for yeah. the show itself, it would have been bad, yes. But no, that was pretty funny. So, but anywho, cool. um, I also remember that. Um, um, well, you do know a lot about me. Do you do? Yes. Just what are you better? Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to remember. I think it was Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State had you do something too. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. What was it? Oh, cultural ambassadors to some, for, the, uh, for some place. Where, where was that? I remember it, and I don't remember it. You remember it, and I don't remember it. Yes. Um, I, I was cultural ambassador. Yes. Just cultural ambassador. For the United States. Yeah, for the United States. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That was at the State not, Department. Not to a place. That was for every place. You were the cultural ambassador. Yeah, I was a cultural that's ambassador. Right. Yeah. Okay. On that, we, we don't talk about politics for two reasons. One, it's all negative, and two, I know very little about it. But I do remember yeah. it because I thought it was so cool because, again. Yeah, I, was back at tw I was back in 2016, then. Uh, that's a good memory. Earlier than that, 2012. No, that's when Hillary Clinton met, met me. Yes. Uh, well, Sean talked about it. Sean, Sean Keeley talked about it on 8-2-2016. So, yeah, January of 2012, you were appointed by, I just looked it up here, Hillary Clinton to be cultural ambassador for the United States. There you go. And, of course, before you, Louis Armstrong did it for President Kennedy, and I, it's another famous guy I like. Yep. Very cool. Very but cool. One last thing, because I know uh, you're going to have to go in here, and we're getting close to the end of our show Yeah, here. I got to leave. I got to um, go. I gotta I, go. I gotta go. I I, I do remember that you I'm doing my dancing. Wait, wait, I'm doing my dribble, 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 dribble. What you changed, now? You, you changed your name to Kareem Abdul Jamara as a Muslim name because you converted to Muslim. And I wanted to say here's another reason why I'm tired of these fanatics that keep thinking that Muslims are evil. You are a great person and you're a credit to humankind, period. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So, yes, Ferdinand Luis uh, El Sindor. Luis El Sindor. Ferdinand Luis El Sindor. Uh, El Sindor Jr. That it was doesn't roll name. off your tongue as well either, does it? See? Nope. Good marketing. So, with that, I want to say adios and I will see you later. Thanks for coming Bye. on board. Hey, that was fun, wasn't it? It was fun. You didn't even talk about me right, when you left. I, he left. He ran. He's gone. Wow. Not only he, that, he's got like a, a six-foot stride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like in two steps, he was out of here. Three steps, he's out of your studio he's and gone. on his way to his limo already. He was gone. Gone ski. Where, where are we at on the show here? Phrase uh, origin story. What do we got left? Phrase origin story. Okay, our phrase origin story. Our phrase origin story is... See, now, here's something that I always... I had it wrong for the longest time, and a couple of years ago, you, you were saying the wrong words. Yes, I, most people think it's in like Flint, and it's not in like Flint. It's in right. like Flynn. Right, right, yeah, right, exactly. In like Flynn. Um, everybody thought it was. You're right. Everybody thinks it's in like Flint. And like, well, how could it be in like Flint? What would Flint be in? Yes. So, but it, it means to be quickly and/or emphatically successful, usually in a sexual or romantic context. Yes. Gained access as desired. Yes. Ooh. Now, the cool thing is the origin of this is the phrase is commonly said to be a reference to Errol Flynn, the Australian film actor. Yes, because Errol Flynn was hot. Yes, he was. And Flynn was famous for his romantic swashbuckler roles in, in films and his flamboyant private life. However, However, here's the interesting thing. Not just on stage. His reputation as a hard-drinking, hell-raising ladies' man was apparently well justified. Uh, and the word, uh, oh, before I get to that, I, I, since we talked about nudity before, he was known as one of the first male actors to be well-endowed um, and very, made him even more popular with the ladies. Because not only did he have the looks and the intelligence 
And he had the equipment for it. He had the equipment for it. Yes. Most, most of your quote unquote big men also not the most personable. So he had the whole package and the package. reason why in the package you use that on purpose. I did. And the word in like in like Flint, the word in had been used in, with regard to success, good fortune, or sexual conquest since the 1940s. Very good. So you could be in like Flynn. Yeah. In like Flynn. woo Cool. So with that, I want to say thank you for watching. And if you feel our show is not a bad life decision, even if you subscribe, like, watch other shows and channels, go to whathappened.world right down there. Whathappened.world, get to our Facebook, get to our Instagram, connect up to us. Go out and find Fun Guy the Entertainer Cooks for you. Uh, someday we'll get back on the webpage. Add that link down, down there. Sorry. Well, uh, we'll have to get that going. Um, but with that, I want you to live every day, and we will see you at the next show. Be genuinely positive. Live and love life, and have a good one. Uh -oh.